Welcome to the Center for ADHD Awareness Feature Story of the Month, where each month we feature a new participant to discuss their lived experiences with ADHD. If you'd like to learn more or become a participant, please follow the link in the description. My name is Carla. Um, I am married and have two kids, teenagers. One's in college, the other's in high school. Um, my day job is two part-time jobs. The first one is I work for a virtual administrative company. I've been working with them for four and a half years, so long before the pandemic. And uh, with them, I support different clients in everything from calendar management to travel booking, editing and creating documents, social media, and um, data whenever they have extra projects to work on. And my other part-time job, I do the social media and website management for a local women's shelter. And I picked that one up by volunteering for seven years. I volunteered to do all of that. And they decided the pandemic sort of helped me with this part, but they decided it was worth creating a part-time position to be paid. So now I can spend even more time doing it and uh, it's been great. It's uh, good for my ADHD. It keeps me engaged every day. There's always something different to do, and um, daily things change, so that's what I've learned. keeps me interested. Um, I don't do well with r repetitive things, and yeah, doing the same thing over and over, I, I get tired of it, and usually that means I sort of don't put my all into it anymore and need to move on. And a lot of times, well, in the past, I didn't realize that was what it was. So jobs didn't always end great. <laughs> um, and yeah, it, just being engaged all the time is what works for my ADHD. I like learning new things. When were you first diagnosed with ADHD? My husband, so I've been married twice. The second time is much better. Um, he also has ADHD. And um, my daughter, over the course of a couple of years, once we first met and got married, um, she's from my first marriage, um, he got in conversations with my ex-husband's wife. <laughs> and because we have joint custody and we get along great. So it's all perfect. But he was talking with his wife and the two of them are, were discussing how my daughter always has the, she would just be more organized and just focus more and, and just not wait till the last minute to get things done. She'd be more successful. And that's something that has been since kindergarten that that's been her report cards. And so we decided to go to our family doctor and ask to be, for her to be um, assessed for ADHD. And she was. And the more that I looked into it and how it worked for girls, the more I was like, wow, these, that's me. <laughs> and it was shocking, absolutely shocking. So I went back to my doctor a couple of months in um, and I said, I think I have ADHD too. So she walked me through the basic, the assessment that she uses. And she's like, well, yeah, I agree with you. So what do you want to do? So we, she started me on, because um, I want to, I wanted to try the different options. So she started me on Concerta and that didn't work out. It um, shot my blood pressure up and I had a headache for three days and, but then um, flipped over to Vyvanse and that's working great. And it's unbelievable when the medication is working, usually take it about 10 o'clock and I'm good till three. And it's amazing how focused I, I can be for work. Um, it's just blown me away. And, and I always try not to think back and say, what if, because hindsight, I always, I struggle just to keep up with stuff in school and, and all of that. And I, I think I'm a fairly smart person, but I just, I've battled the whole time just to finish things. I never really got to make use of getting beyond that. So um, this is huge and it's, it's helped me a lot with my day. So. 
Has your ADHD changed with age? So I was the, the typical girl with ADHD where, you know, the quiet person doesn't rock the boat, just does what she's supposed to. I hated getting into trouble. So I just stayed out of confrontation and any of that sort of thing. And when I went away to college, I decided I didn't want to miss out on fun anymore. So I pushed myself. I really, really pushed myself. So I sort of changed how I was by pushing myself. Um, I still feel like I'm, I do have some of those things, but I know that I can push myself now that, so I can do social things and try new things and, and be out and about. So yeah, the, the medication now helps that a lot more. I don't have to push myself as much for things. I, I have a little more confidence too. So, um, so there are the same symptoms are still there, but, um, because I'm, I'm over 40, um, I've had all that time to, um, be, to make habits, I guess. So I've taught myself how to do things that, and, and I, it's just a, a routine and a habit that I do now. What are some of the biggest obstacles you've faced because of your ADHD? In high school, I, I loved music. I still love music. And, but I was always worried about not being enough and always worried about the music teacher. She had a bit of a temper. She was wonderful though. But, and I, I, she mentioned a, a musical and having a pit band for it. So I was like, why not? So I, that was the first time I ever went outside my comfort zone and tried out for it. And I got it. So that sort of gave me a little bit more confidence in a few things. Um, what, and like I said, when I went to college, I told myself I was going to meet people and I was going to participate and get involved in different things. So um, those were two of the biggest, yeah, the biggest things when I was younger. Yeah, it was always, well, uh, I'm not good enough or, you know, that that person they have very high expectations and i'm not sure that i can you know be that do that well and, and i'll embarrass myself and and that kind of thing so it was it was yeah there's anxiety there for sure do you find that your treatment is effective in managing your symptoms the medication i think how that is right now i'm about I started during the pandemic is when I got assessed in 2019, I guess. So I haven't been on the medication for a really long time, um, but I felt that was a good first step just to kind of have a, 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 not really a blank slate, but just a basis to work from. And now I'm trying some um, um, natural things. Um, I have a naturopath who I'm working with. I haven't stopped and I probably won't stop the prescribed medication, but I find that this other medic, the, the natural herbs that she's giving me are helping with um, when my medication runs out about three o'clock, I feel like, feel like I'm crashing sometimes. So the natural medication helps me come down off the meds a little bit like smoother. Um, Cause I noticed sometimes I was kind of angry and <laughs> snappy coming down off the meds. So I think that that that's what works for me right now um, in a, a different space than our home is kind of chaotic, but I might try doing just the, um, the herbal and medication to see if I can get that working on its own. Um, but yeah, for the time being, it, I'll kind of combine the two. And I, I think it's whatever works for the person who's, who's dealing with, having ADHD, what works best for them. When I was younger, I worked as a nanny for a summer when I was 16. And the, the eldest child, he was almost seven. They determined he had ADHD and they put him on Ritalin. And I had a very negative experience with medicated kids because he'd spend all day in like a zombie sort of state. He'd kind of go out and wander around and he wasn't, you know, bouncy and all that sort of thing. And then about an hour before his parents got home, his medication wore off. 
and he's bouncing off the walls. And as I'm going home, they're in full on fights to get him in his pajamas and to get to bed and all that sort of thing. So I always, up until, I guess about well, two years ago, I was always against medication. Um, but again, this was back when I was 16 and things have changed a lot and they're a lot better at diagnosing it. So um, I think it's worth giving a chance. What are some of the biggest misconceptions about ADHD? I s- still think it's um, seen very much as the little boys out of control, very hyper and not being able to sit still. And I think that's true about more boys that are diagnosed with ADHD, but um, I think there's, it's still lacking on the other side, the inattentive, which is what I have and my daughter has, and that they need to be more aware of, of girls and some boys, but mostly girls presenting these symptoms. And you can't just think it's that quiet girl in the back of the room um, and not try and help them just as much as you're helping the boys or the kids who are hyperactive. Um, you just have to sort of change the thought process. So I think that that piece is still missing. It's, it's being talked about a lot more though and even in the last couple of years it's definitely being talked about more so I think it's it's progressing somewhere eventually how has your experience been in the workplace um so when I went to college I went for early childhood education and I did that because everybody thought I should and I was good with kids and um I was told by a teacher in grade 10, I wasn't smart enough to be a teacher in a school, but early childhood education was better. Yeah, it's, I look back on that and, and, and like that sort of train wrecked my interest in being able to do that or even being able to bring my marks up good enough because I could have, but it's sort of, I took it to heart and, and I did go through and become an early childhood educator and I did enjoy it for a few years, but um, I just sort of got over it. And I, looking back now, I don't really think that was what I should have done. I think I had an interest in a whole lot of other things. Um, I love to draw and um, do floor plans. So I look back and think it might have been a great architect or, or drafts person or something like that. But again, hindsight is twenty twenty. So I've fought through different sort of jobs and the my ADHD I know was part of why I've had so many jobs because jobs are nice and shiny and new when you start out and once you get into a routine and, and for me when it was always the same thing I kind of sort of got lazy with work and then I didn't like it and then sometimes I didn't move on other times well I've been laid off and I've been fired a couple of times and it's it was always embarrassing to me I felt so terrible for it and if I had just recognized that I wasn't happy being there and sought out something different then then I could have moved on my own steam and not sort of been pushed out the door and that's now what I've I've realized I wish I was when I was 20 I realized all of this but and that's why these two part-time jobs I have now um, the one with the women's shelter is just a contract and if they don't renew it then that's that they don't renew it but the other job I will always have I I I love how it changes and um, having that is good for me now I know a lot of I know other women with ADHD and and guys as well. And and what I'm doing is like my husband, he's like, I could never sit in front of a computer and do somebody's schedule. Um, That's just not what he does. Um, But with the company, um, the administrative company, there are actually a number of other women I work with who have ADHD. So it's it's a quite interesting place. And I, I think because now I know I have ADHD and because I've learned and changed how I do things, it's brought me to this position and really enjoying it and, and uh, finally being somewhere I'm comfortable and haven't been bored in four and a half years and that's pretty good for me. <laughs> how has your experience been in educational spaces? 
The, um, so with my daughter in school, she was diagnosed. We had a psychoeducational assessment done on our own dime. Um, cause we were kind of dejected after we went to the general publicly funded one. Um, we weren't very happy with the process. So we, we thankfully have benefits through my husband's work and we could get a full assessment done. So we went to the school. She was, she just had finished grade 10 and we went to the school in June with this psychoeducational assessment in tow and they accepted it and said in, in the fall, they would be implementing it in. And then the pandemic sort of shut everything down. So they had started because she was late diagnosed. Um, they started putting together uh, an IEP for her, but there was not really any opportunity for them to build on it or adjust it because school ended up being from home. And she actually thrived with doing school from home. She had some of her best marks ever doing school from home. And so she, I didn't need to fight. <laughs> with anybody for that there just wasn't the opportunity to because she got the support she needed from the teachers by doing it online when she was she applied to school and she connected with their um, resource program there and they had people in their resource program she had I think at least two virtual meetings with um, an advisor there before she even started last September this September this September um, and I was just shocked because we hadn't seen anything like that in the high school, but the college was all over it. So I think, I do think there is still a gap with, within a high school level. Um, my youngest, we are in the process of adopting her. She just turned 15, but she has hyperactive ADHD and we are, and mild intellectual disability as well. And it's, we've had a very good experience with, because she came with a psychoeducational assessment and she's had the years in school. She was diagnosed when she's like eight, I think. And she's had the years in schools for them to build up that, that IEP. And the school that both of them, like the high school, they both are, have, have attended and are attending. There's very big on supporting the kids with special needs, um, especially just finding ways for them to survive. And so far she's been doing okay. So I haven't had any negative experiences with school so far with my kids. Um, back when, when I was a kid, my young, my younger sister, she had learning disabilities and um, she, she's got ADHD. She got, <laughs> she was uh, diagnosed like, like me as an adult. Her son has hyperactive ADHD and it started with him getting diagnosed and then her, but she struggled all through school. And my mom was, was that mom, uh oh, watch out that, that mom's called the school. She's coming in. And the, she had, didn't have the greatest reputation at the school because she came in to fight for my sister. And um, that was huge back then that people didn't do that. And so she found a lot of barriers. Then my sister um, didn't went for six months of college and dropped out, she said, forget it. Because there was no support. They just handed you a computer because you had special needs and said, there you go, do general arts and we'll see. And that was it. So this having this experience with my oldest so far and my youngest, um, we've only been having the experience with her, the youngest for about six months. But um, the experience my oldest has had has been leaps and bounds better than it was when I remember my sister going through that. And so I, I think um, schools are getting better, at least the ones that we've had experiences with. Um, and with regards to professional, like I said, my, my admin job is, um, ever, it's acknowledged that if you have ADHD or even like they, they welcome people um, sharing about themselves and talking about even just mental health piece. So if someone has a rough day, they can, come in and say, listen, I'm, it's not a good day for me. Can I have some support? And, and the way the company is set up is everybody has a team of people. There's always somebody for backup. So if you get sick or your child gets sick or anything goes wrong, you can say, hey, can you cover me today? And there always is. And that's all the combined, you know, issues that people come up with, including the ADHD side of stuff. So 
that that position is amazing. Um, and it's, there's only one guy that works for the company. It's all women. And there's about 35, I think there's 35 of us now. And um, my other job, they, I don't think they know that I have ADHD, um, but the, the, all the work I do for them is, is highly engaging. So, and it's sort of here, you have 30 hours over two weeks, go for it. And because I'm the one who sort of did built up all the social media, then it's me, like it's, it's my thing. So I, I don't have to worry if I don't feel like working one day, I can catch up the next day. So it's, it's been pretty, pretty good. Do you think more accommodation should be made in education and workspaces for those with ADHD? Yes. Yeah. Um, I think, I still think a lot of it though, is that like, it's more of the, the my, my daughter's generation and such that it's more diagnosed and, you know, more understood and all that. So, so the older generations like myself, we are still in that world and working with people that, you know, still see it as it was that hyperactive little boy that was ADHD. So it's not widely known or understood. And when I was working, um, well, the jobs I had in the past, I'm not sure. I, I'm not sure how I would even go about saying, like, I, I'm not sure my anxiety would let me say I have ADHD. So just so you know, if you see this or that, it speaks to my ADHD. Um, I just don't think daycare might have been maybe, um, but I've worked in office uh, an office um, situation before as an, an executive assistant and um, as a scheduler for um, another company. And yeah, I just I'm not sure that the atmosphere there would allow for someone to step up and say, "I have this disability." And, you know, hopefully there can be some accommodations for me. Um, I was up until this point, I was always figuring out that job so that I could do it. So I was sorting out my own accommodations that I could do myself, not that I could, I would be able to ask them for. So definitely more awareness in different places and what accommodations can help people. And I hope that because the younger generations are more diagnosed and have come through school and getting all of the supports that they can go into the companies and say, these are the supports I used when I was in school and uh, that's what helped me to do it. So can we have these accommodations? And I, I hope the workforce will grow more because of that. Um, but so far now, I, I don't think there's a lot, there's a lot of places that will accommodate for that. They would just be like, okay, sure. You have ADHD, whatever. <laughs> so. How do you feel ADHD has benefited your life? The, the ability to hyper-focus on things is fantastic. I wish I could do it all the time. Um, well, maybe not because sometimes that would take away from <laughs> living life. But um, ADHD has kind of helped me find different niches that I really enjoy. And um, my interests are so broad, they don't fit into just one little line. And um, I also think it's great my ADHD I everything is interesting to me and I love to learn um if it's short if it's a short span of time I can stick with it <laughs> um but I I think now that I've understand that I have ADHD it makes things a lot easier because it's it's not what's the saying they they have it's not it's not an excuse it's a reason and now the reason why I have difficulties doing things is because of ADHD, but ADHD has also helped me be even better and find even more things and just enjoy things a lot more. Um, and yeah, so I, I see more positives than negatives, especially now with the diagnosis and a little bit extra help for focusing. 